Editing long podcasts like this or webinars for social is time consuming. Simplified AI Clips uses AI to turn your lengthy videos into short, viral clips. Create shareable content from your recordings in a few minutes. Built for small businesses and marketers looking to save time and boost engagement, visit simplified.com and use Annika30 to save 30% today. Welcome to Your Brand Amplified, the podcast where we interview marketers, publicists, and brands to learn their stories, what makes them tick, and tips and tricks that make a difference. Welcome back. I'm your host, Annika Jackson, and this week I'm here with Melissa Blatt. Welcome, Melissa. Good morning or afternoon, wherever you're listening. (laughs) (laughs) So we connected via LinkedIn actually as a resource for my company, and then I was intrigued by what you do, um, and I said, no, you have to come on my podcast. So will you please tell our audience a little bit about your company and then I want to really get in because you've had so many transitions and really cool experiences. I'm, I'm just really excited. It's not learn. a straight line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a few curveballs in there. Um, I have a company. I founded a company a, com- a company a couple of years ago called Indie Pop, which stands for Independent Population. Mm. So these are all the folks that are not employed by a company getting their health care. And I'm one of these people that went out on my own and just had sticker shock when I tried to get affordable health care. Um, and it just set me into this path of trying to find a solution. And once I did, I said, I know I'm not alone. There's 57 million people just like me who are struggling. And, um, and I can go into the weeds a little bit with, with health care. But um, essentially, that is, yeah, a couple of years ago, I launched this company called IndiePop. Wow, only two years ago. And did I hear you say right before we started this that you're already, you're going to be on a magazine cover? Yeah, so I'm a contributing writer for Top Doctor Magazine, which is very exciting because the more physicians that I speak with, the more that they like this idea of health sharing. And that's exactly what Indie Pop does is we don't curate traditional health care or health insurance, I should say. It's all health shares. And health shares is just a different approach to managing medical needs. So instead of a premium and a deductible, you become a member of a community that shares the cost in a medical need. And this is just a little different for people, um, you know, leaving that the known of, you know, I have a premium, yeah, the the traditional conventional and saying, okay, I'm going to be part of this health share. Now, not all health shares are created equal. So what IndiePop does is we, well, I put them through the Melissa test. (laughs) So it has to be simple. It has to be affordable. I I meet with the executive team. I read the reviews. I get to know the product inside and out and what I would be comfortable having my family or friends utilize. So essentially, there are only high-valued plans on my site, um, only five, and that's um, very strategic because um, there's a lot out there. And so I went through, you know, six months of research of, well, what do I really need in a health share? And they range. I mean, you, you can just uh, find a health share that has amazing telehealth, or you can have one that also has hospitalization, the med- major medical, vision and dental, HSAs, I mean, it, the gamut. So, wow. yeah. So Top Doctor with, um, with the, these physicians, they get back to really practicing medicine as not a, you are... A, a ID card or in a group number. You're a patient needing care. Um, so it's kind amazing. of exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, that sounds like you've had amazing growth in the last two years. So tell our audience, because we love talking about transitions and inflection points when mm-hmm. women realize that they need to make a change and they want to do something different. So mm-hmm. you said um, earlier that it's, it's not a straight line, the path mm-hmm. um, that you took. And I think that's what a lot of us find, but you didn't start out in healthcare. No, <laughs> and the funniest thing, you know, I scratched my head. I went to film school um, in oh, New York wow. and I, yes, I'm a creative soul. Um, I went out to LA, did the film thing in my early twenties, never worried about healthcare or just, you know, live the yeah. freelance yeah. lifestyle. Um, I got more involved in business development. I really liked that, um, that trajectory of just helping a business with partnerships and open doors. It was something that I'm just, it kind of is my native genius actually. So once I found that, you know, it, 
it didn't feel like work. I really enjoyed networking and meeting people and I just can connect the dots. Um, so a lot of my background was in nonprofit. It's, you know, it feels good, it's purposeful. And then at age 40, which to some people it's very old, um, <laughs> I made the leap into technology and I worked for a company right here in Arizona called Infusionsoft. They changed their name to Keep. And I worked there for four years and I really got to understand the customer journey in digital marketing. And um, so for anybody listening that is kind of scared, uh, you know, you've been in the same career 10 years, but you're really itching and you're like, well, I'm too old. Um, you're not too old. Just take the jump, just do it. Just try, wouldn't you rather try and say you tried than to 10, 10 more years go by and you say, well, what if I would have? Exactly. Right? You know, that's such, it's a conversation I think we have when we reach this age. I'm in my mid to late forties. Yes. Um, and it's, you know, it's not, it's the, our age and not being afraid to take that leap and do what we actually want to do. And then the phases of life, right? So thinking about when you're younger, maybe you wanted to follow your passion, you wanted to follow your dream, or you wanted to make lots of money. And then you realized that there was more to life and you wanted to find satisfaction and passion and be passionate about your work and, and what you're putting out into the world. And so I think this is just like an amazing time to do this. And I hear all the time people talking to, I mean, friends mentioning healthcare and the issues that they're having, finding a good plan. And if, you know, if you go through um, different states and you try to do different state plans or you try to do the Affordable Care Act and which plans go or which ones don't. And if you have that PPO, but there's only one doctor 50 miles away, oh. who takes it. Like, so many I hear that all the time. Oh my gosh. We're speaking into my language. Yeah. And this wasn't something that I fell in love with, which was healthcare. I, I was, you know, but it's it came out of my own pain point that I I just realized, just like what you said, there's probably you know, so many people that are working their nine to five job that are like, well, I wish I could be a full-time content writer or a marketing professional out on my own and be my own boss, but Healthcare is so expensive. So I'd like to think that IndiePop can help fulfill your dreams and, and help reach your goals because you can find an affordable plan. Um, and, you know, we have plans that start at 175 a month. So wow. yeah, it's, and, and that helps for those what if scenarios of what if I slip and fall and break my bone? What if I need an emergency appendectomy? What if I have a heart attack? So just that gives you some peace of mind. And then, you know, it goes into there's different plans for different scenarios. But um, yeah, it's, healthcare is such a huge component of whatever, you, you know, a lot of people stay for the benefits. They yeah, do. That's true. So, um, that's true. Yeah. And that's what happened is uh, in my late 40s, I left um, Keep. And I decided I wanted to be a in business development from for like a fractional um, mm -hmm. kind of business development person. I wanted to work for several companies, and that's when I was faced with, "Wow, this is really expensive." As you get older, um, the price of healthcare goes up and up, and I was getting less and less for my money, and my deductible was eight grand. So I, you, you can see, I got a little mad. I did, and I'm like, "Okay, what what is out there?" So I like this approach to managing medical needs because I have, it's basically a concierge team mm -hmm. that helps me navigate the right care at the best price. So it's, you know, when anything new comes into the market, like Uber, um, mm -hmm. I remember I was reading about it and I called my mom, like, cause we grew up in New York. And so we always took cabs, you know, and that was like the way of life. I'm like, mom, you can use this app and some strange guy can pick you up in a car. <laughs> She's like, why, why would anyone want to do that? And I'm like, I don't know. And now I'm like, how do I get to the airport? Lift or Uber all the time. So I think there's this um, education and early adopter moment of trying something new and saying, okay, there's not just one way to do something. And, and what you do, because you're based in Arizona, but anybody anywhere in the United States could sign up for one of Yes. Years. Yeah. So HealthShares, what's really cool is it's open enrollment every month. So that's already, you can enroll Sunday night at 11 o'clock. It doesn't matter which month. So that's already cool. Then you have, let's say you have some college kids 
age and you're like, okay, we live in Colorado, but my, my kid is going in, you know, to Florida. Will this work? Yes, it's portable. Let's say that you want to take here in Arizona. We all know it's brutally hot in the summer and many of us flee <laughs> because it's hard to enter the date. But you can go to, you know, uh, California in an Airbnb for a couple of weeks. And if something happened, your plan is still in place there. So that's kind of nice. It's flexible. It's portable, um, depending on what plan. But yeah, that's one of the, the perks of it. And like I mentioned, the concierge care, always fair medical pricing. So that means an MRI, I live in Chandler, Arizona, is going to be the fair medical price here. Um, and you'll get, if you're in Brooklyn, New York, the fair medical price there for the MRI. So not the insurance price. Right. Um, some will go towards your out-of-pocket and some will be just negotiated on your behalf. Um, I had an MRI a few months ago on my elbow. No, I don't play golf or tennis. I really <laughs> I should have because I'm like, what did I do to it? Um, and it turned out to be like a tendonitis and I had a uh, MRI for $300. We all saw, you know, you hear these MRIs in the hospital, thousands and thousands, mm -hmm. but there is real, there's like real rates for these, these things that you can compare. And many of us don't know that yeah. or don't have the bandwidth and time to, to right. dig into that. And that's where health shares are amazing at, because you have this team that exactly does that. They help direct and navigate uh, cost. So it's, it's so, just a different approach. Yeah. My next question is what about expats? So US citizens who move overseas? Um, so if you're on vacation, yes. Yeah. If you're living, <laughs> no. Okay. You can't live and use it because this really is a United States. Um, be, because technically you're really a member. Mm -hmm. And so you're a member in a membership that's based in the United States. So, yeah. um, yeah. well, I just, I ask, yeah, because my, my mom lives in Thailand yeah. um, and my stepdad is at an age where now the government's changed requirements so that you have to have a certain amount of insurance, but they can't get a health plan over there for that amount of coverage even though they have money to put towards it. And so, I don't know, that could be another area of opportunity if you're just, if you decide to expand. Well, I'd love to be international someday. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <The> next phase. <laughs> that does, because we're around the same age. Um, I have, I had a couple of people that were in their 60s find out about Indie Pop. And I, I wasn't thinking that could be my market as well. Cause I kept thinking, you know, um, people that are coming off of their parents' plans at 26, freelancing in the 30, you know, 35 year olds, but these women, 62, um, were, you know, a Cobra plan was $900 for them. And through Indie Pop, they got a plan for 319 wow. and $600 a month in savings is over 6,000 a year. What could you do with that, yeah. with that money? So it's very interesting. Um, and then small business owners, you know, let's say you have, uh, five employees and you would love to contribute, but getting a group plan is ridiculously expensive. So this is another flexible way and creative way because each person in your company, they don't have to take the same plan. Oh. So you're basically getting out of the insurance game and saying, hey, I will contribute such and such dollar. Um, and here we partner with IndiePop and check out you know, these plans. So oh my gosh, okay. I there's love a that. Lot, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of creative ways um, I also have, this was another thing that happened over the course of the year that I learned. So some people have a spouse that is a W-2 employee and they have amazing health care. But once you add your other spouse and your child, yeah. it goes through the roof. So I have a couple of families that split it. Their spouse stays on the company plan and then they go on to a health share. So it's, it's kind of, if you think about it. It sounds so crazy. freeing. Yeah, it, just, it is free. It is free because it's all about finding something that works at a really great price, mm -hmm. and you can, you know, you have this feeling of if something happens, I know exactly what my out of pocket is going to be. It's very transparent, so so I like that. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, so, okay, so you went on this journey. You were going to originally do business development. You ended up founding a healthcare company. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a different now for myself. And I'd like to think that whatever that your native genius is, eventually all these moments in life lead up to exactly where you're supposed to yeah. be. And I think many of us, I had a lot of angst in my 20s about 
um, being successful and knowing exactly what I'm doing for the rest of my life. And as I got older, I released that and I let that go because sometimes the universe points you in a direction you never thought you were going to be. And it's a, it's just a, a bigger plan than you could have ever imagined it to be. Yeah. So, you know, some of my younger friends and, and some of the younger people that are graduating that I mentor, I, I talk to them about that and saying, you know, everything that you're doing has, has reason and it has a purpose. And even if it didn't work out, even right. if you think you failed, it's going to be the best lesson for you. And you have to embrace that. There really are no mistakes. That, that's a really good lesson for entrepreneurs. Um, I have a lot of entrepreneurs on both sides of my family. Mm-hmm. And I always thought being an entrepreneur meant you were successful. And I, it took a lot of time to realize, well, no, that's not the truth. Being an entrepreneur is just something that you innately have inside you, that you have to do this. But it doesn't mean you're going to be successful, just as you're saying, at every single thing you do. But it's all a learning experience that gets you to the next phase. How many, how many entrepreneurs that we know successful now failed three times before they, this one caught on? Yeah. Even Amazon Jeff Bezos, wasn't he in his garage doing his Amazon stuff when he first started? Mm-hmm. Um, listen to the Airbnb folks when they first started. I mean, you have to start somewhere. But there was, before that, there were moments that led up to it that probably weren't at, you know, your million dollar idea or your best foot forward, like, but you try. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wow. So I know we threw out some suggestions, hint, hint, international, but um, (laughs) what what are some of the things that you're looking at doing next for your business? Well, I'm I'm very excited. This June, we just uh, launched an indie pop pop plan. It's, it's called a POP, which is personalized optional plan. So these are three different customized plans and uh, just finished um, putting that on the website. Um, And I'm partnering with more companies out there that serve the self-employed population. So if you're listening and you're uh, a a company that serves um, gig workers, independent contractors, freelancers, small businesses, um, hit me up. I have a partners and perks page and I would love to highlight your business. And um, so we're, we're growing in that area and reaching more larger businesses that don't even offer something for their 1099 workers that they're, you know, they're like, Hey, we need some contract work in this area for three months. And little do they know that that person is eking by, (laughs) um, and they're, they're probably paying three times the rates for healthcare. So by this company just saying, hey, by the way, we partner with Indie Pop. You know, we know that you're out on your own for healthcare. Here are some options. Um, you know, there's the freelance economy, or they call it that the gig economy yeah. is growing. Um, the pandemic has, at the beginning, it was uh, really, really hard. Eight out of ten freelancers were unemployed. Now we're seeing a shift. More companies are hiring freelancers than bringing on full timers. Mm-hmm. So we're seeing that kind of trajectory. I think in the next 10 years, you're going to really see this contract work. Um, A a lot of professionals like being their own boss. They like the flexibility. They like being in control of their own destiny. They like being able to work remotely. So it's moving in a very positive direction. Yeah. And then conversely, I've been hearing that people are choosing to quit their jobs at corporations rather than go back to the workforce because they like the flexibility of working from home. And so that's another whole new market of people who are going, who are new freelancers. Right. (laughs) And I think that's it. Uh, we're, I do, um, kind of a Facebook live each month. And this month was packed. I had, I'm having four different guests and I have on June 24th, um, Brooke Sproul, she is, she owns LA therapy and she's going to talk about the mindset of being your own boss, whether you're, you've been a company employee for a, you know, a while, because it does take a different mindset, whether you're an entrepreneur with a startup or you're launching being a, you know, a, a software engineer, you have to run it like a, like a business um, because you're responsible for the trajectory of your career. You don't, you're not inside a microcosm where you want to um, move laterally or, you know, get a promotion. And then it's a completely different type of, I think, a, sh- a, mindset, sh- a mindset shift. So that's on June 24th, if anyone is interested in, um, in joining us for that conversation. Awesome. Wonderful. Yeah. So I know that the entrepreneur's journey, it's really hard for us to find balance that, quote, 
word balance that doesn't really exist. Um, but what do you do for self-care and to, to reset? So is it uh, weird to say I do have a Peloton? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It gets good and bad. I love my Peloton. I have nothing bad to say. Um, and I have to carve out time. Mm -hmm. I think this is another interesting, um, I don't know, descri description of an entrepreneur's life is because you don't go into an office where you have a boss, where you're working specific number of hours, I tend to work crazy hours and sometimes to the point where I have to physically just stop, shut down, put my computer, put my phone away um, because you can keep going and going and going. But I tried to get enough sleep and I felt guilty because I'm one of these people that I know I need seven to eight hours. And I read about entrepreneurs that are only working four to five hours and they get up at five in the morning and they're writing and they're, I'm like, Oh my God, I can't yeah. fuck no. <laughs> What's wrong with me. I'm going to fail as an entrepreneur because I can't get up early. And, but I work really late and my creativity starts after 3 PM. Usually I'm like, ah. so anyway, self-care is, um, I'm always trying to find a balance to yeah. a work-life balance. Um, you know, it's summertime, like people are taking vacations and I'm thinking to myself, I am in the midst of, <laughs> will I ever take a vacation again? <laughs> will I ever? But, um, Friday nights, my phone shuts down until Saturday night. So I disconnect. Um, so I do have, I do have that. Yeah. I completely disconnect and, um, exercise and sleep and, you know, drinking my water. Um, but I need to have more fun. I do. I'm going to admit that. <laughs> I, yeah, I will say, so I, I did take a trip recently to the East coast for, uh, my partner's, um, one of his nephews was getting married and it was, you know, everybody was vaccinated. So we were like, okay, we can all get together finally. Um, yeah. And I still worked, but I tried to decrease the amount of work and it made me even more salty, if anything, because I realized like, I really do need to unplug. I need to have like a couple of days where I don't do any work meetings and I just enjoy being present with family and, you know, doing, you know, going on the boardwalk or going to the beach or taking the boat out or whatever it is, just having that time. And I wasn't giving myself that time. And so it really, really made me go, I I'd do better if I make my, myself do that because I'll do the same thing. I'll just work until like nine, 10 o'clock at night. And then, you know, yeah. You hear that for new moms or just motherhood in general. Um, and then, you know, the whole adage of, on the plane, put your mask on first before yep. you put your child on. It's yeah. you got to take care of yourself. So if Indy Pop is my baby, I got to take care mm -hmm. of me so that I can be a hundred percent and show up yeah. for my members and for my team. And, um, but it's hard sometimes to draw that line because you, oh, one more email or I'll design one more thing or I'll just, um, and you know. I'm, I'm huge. I, yeah, I'm a huge Netflix person. So I just connect, uh, you know, with prime Hulu. I, I try to just, I'm not kidding. Like just escape for a little bit. Um, and then don't watch the show startup because if you watch that, I'm like, Oh my oh, God, it's like my life without the drugs, the murder and the mafia. Oh but that's basically <laughs> so be careful what you watch, but, um, but yeah, I, I think that's, you know, I, I just, I love, I love film and television so much. And um, it's just one of the ways that I kind of escape my world, try to dive into somebody else's. <laughs> awesome. I, I do the same. I like to read um, or I like to watch, you know, yeah, shows, but then I get sucked into shows like I was watching Black Mirror, which I haven't really watched before. And I was like, oh, I thought, cause I thought it was gonna be like super scary. And I'm like, oh, it's not really scary. It's just really fascinating, but it's intellectual. But then I had weird dream, you know, then I've been having weird dreams because I've been thinking about the episodes while I sleep. So be careful what you, oh, yeah. what you watch for sure. hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. There's, there's a reason why you're not supposed to watch TV or, or bring your iPad in bed. Like <laughs> exactly. I, uh, because you do like, yeah, it's, it will stay, it will stay in your brain. So yeah, be careful, but what, try to watch some fun, some fun shows and, oh. um, yeah, it's just a way to just connect. Yeah. So you have um, a series on Facebook that you do once a month. 
and people can find it. It depends. depends. Um, Like this, I have four guests this month, ranging from, I had the co-founder of Redirect Health on June 2nd. This Thursday, which is June 17th, um, will be Rachel Basoko from, she's the head of experience for Luminary. Luminary is a co-working space um, in New York City. And it's, it's really fascinating because I found out about it right before the pandemic where it was an in-person space. And then they started to launch a virtual digital membership, which really helped me connect because we were all you know, very isolated. And a lot of what I was doing was meetings and I couldn't do that anymore. But here was this amazing community in New York, wonderful women, all different ages, all different backgrounds. So Rachel has helped build that community experience. And I think that's um, when you're self-employed collaboration and community is very important. So I'm excited to speak with her. And then um, June 22nd is um, HR answer. So if you're growing and you're going to bring on a W2 or a 1099, you should have a checklist. Mm-hmm. So this is um, Nikki, I think it's from Beerus, is going to be talking to us about checklists. So mm-hmm. anything about growth for your business and, you know, empowering you as a self-employed professional, that's what um, that's how I try to make my decisions for Indie Pop, bringing on a new plan or who I'm partnering with. I always have in mind, is this good for my audience? Yeah. Is this good for this population? Wonderful. Yeah. Melissa, how can people find you just on your website and social media? Yeah. yeah. Indie Pop, I N D I P O P dot C O, Indie Pop dot C O. You can email hello at Indie Pop dot C O if you'd like. Um, and of course, I'm on LinkedIn under Melissa Blatt, founder of Indie Pop. Um, looking forward to, you know, reaching, hearing from potential members, p- potential partners. Um, we're open to hearing and partnering with lots of different companies. So awesome. Well, I'm, I'm really excited about the innovations that you're creating in the workforce. And um, as soon as you said that, in, that contractors could also, because my ears perked up because most of my team is employees, but I also have some contractors. And so it's been hard for me to figure out like the what next with, okay, I want to start providing benefits. What does that look like? But um, I'm definitely going to be reaching out to you about that. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. And, and I think it's a really win-win when a small business can look at their contractors saying, I value you and I appreciate you. And even if you can't do a full amount to say, I'm contributing whatever, you know, 125 towards this plan. Um, I think freelancers are, you know, there's more loyalty then and, and they, they feel appreciated and the, their work is valued. And yeah. so it's just a win-win. Yeah. Oh. I look forward to talking to you again. And yeah. thank you so much. This was really fun talking about um, trajectories. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I loved it. And I, I learned a lot. So thank you for sharing all of your knowledge and I love all of the pivots. Um, it made me really think as you were talking about my journey and I actually started out in marketing and promotions and here I am again and I, but I'm doing exactly what I always wanted to do. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's really, yeah. it's really awesome. Like, oh, here I am again, but this is what I'm supposed to be doing and it feels so good. So it, it's a great spot to be in. And I'm glad that you found that too. And that, you know, you're on the road to helping so many people. And that's, that's just it. That's my why. Um, I, I love helping people. It, as I mentioned, it came out of my own pain point. So I am not just a, a founder of the company, I'm a member of the company. And so um, it just puts a different, you know, out- outlook on um, where Indie Pop, who we're serving and what we're, what we're, you know, what the future has in store. So um, yeah, for anyone out there that's questioning, um, you know, am I in the right place? Um, you know, you don't have to make a leap right now, but I, I think don't make a decision out of fear. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, thanks for having a conversation with me today. And thank you. Thanks yeah. for our listeners for being here. We'll be back next week. Yay. Want more tips and tricks? Check us out online at www.annikapr.com, on social media at Annika Jackson PR, or join our three month PR incubator bootcamp for small businesses via www.princubator.com. Stop using five apps to manage your marketing. Meet Simplified One. It's an AI-powered all-in-one platform for creators and small businesses to design, make videos, 
and publish content to all social media platforms. Visit simplified.com and use Annika 30 to save 30% today.